Welcome to tonight's presentation of the Pro Basketball Association. If you want pro, you want the PBA. Getting ready to go in this one from Columbus, Georgia. Greg Allen with you on Triangle Media by 1891, the Pro Basketball Association, its second season, and it is the Southwest Florida Blazers and the Georgia Vipers. Let's introduce you to the starting lineups first for the Blazers, making their first appearance of the season. It'll be Anthony Jackson at 6'6", six six, Swandrick Miller at 6'3", 5'11", guard Elijah Terrell, Ruben Berry at 6'7", and 6'0", Marlon Hart out of Queens, New York. For the Georgia Vipers, their starting rotation includes the guy we talked about earlier, Cortez Chaney. It'll be Daryl White, Cornelius Thomas, Bill Reese, and Marcel Hawkins. The Georgia Vipers, they'll come out clad in the traveling purple, while the dark black it looks like trimmed in orange maybe a dark brown in orange that would be for the southwest blazers glad to have you with us for this pro basketball association matchup anxious to see this viper bunch boy they are loaded with offense 106 and a half points a ball game on average through two so that defense by southwest florida will be critical here as we get this one underway the blazers They'll be going right to left. That'll be Reuben Berry out of the Bronx, New York, to jump it up. See who comes to the center circle for the Georgia Vipers. And we'll get this one going here from Columbus. Second home game of the year for the Georgia Vipers. They've got a matchup with the Mississippi Hawks coming up in early June. The Blazers, they'll get the Dothan Spiders. That's one of the teams the Vipers have already beaten so far this year. The opening tip is controlled by Southwest Florida. And the first shot of the ball game, an off balance jumper, no good, but the putback right there for Anthony Jackson. And well, that size inside for the Blazers. They've got 6'6, 6'6, 6'7, 6'6, 6'10 on their roster. And so if you're if you're gonna go offense for offense, boy, the, the height the Blazers can offer you certainly can go a long way to their success tonight. So the Vipers, their first offensive possession here is Daryl White. Fakes the pull-up jump shot, and to the baseline, into the corner, that jumper no good. Rebound loose on the floor, and back out to White. Good early distributor for the Vipers, that shot out of the corner no good, and so the Blazers try to take an early here, four nothing lead. Anthony Jackson with the opening bucket, went to Lehigh High School, and the driving a layup attempt, but a great block underneath by Otis Jones for the Vipers. This Viper bunch just to get a ton of offense. And one of the, one of the other numbers we talked about, the, the number of points they've scored, they also share the ball very, very well. Get into some of that as we go along here. Top of the arc three-pointer. Ruben Berry can't connect. Boy, he got the 6'7 guy out there shooting the three. In the meantime, Daryl White comes the other way, got himself in trouble too deep underneath the basket, had to get rid of it, a turnover. This is trouble for the Vipers early, and a driving layup is going to go for the Blazers to make it now 4 nothing. as Marlon Hart gets into the act. Out of Spotswood, New Jersey High School, originally hailing from the Queens, New York, so 4 nothing. Great start for the Blazers. Again, their 2022 debut. Here's a fader across the lane. That goes for Cornelius Thomas. And the Vipers are on the board now 4-2. to two. The Vipers, especially against the Dothan Spiders, they made 39 field goals and had 20 assists. Well, that is sharing the basketball. 20 assists on 39 field goals against the Montgomery Knights in their six-point six win. Pull up right elbow jumper. That's good. And the Blazers now take a 6-2 to two advantage. Vipers with it to the baseline. Otis Jones going to go to the basket, rim it around. It'll fall in, and Jones has his first bucket. Against the Knights, 39 field goals attempts and 19 assists. So they score it well. They share it well. And that's one of the big reasons here in the first part of this season. They are 2-0 to start the campaign. Reuben Berry trying to go to work inside, put it on rim, he'll finish. 
And may have got the foul to go with it. I think he did. So Ruben Berry. Now there's, again, that presence inside. So far, the Blazers have gotten points from 6'6 six, six, and 6'7. Six, and Berry at 6'7 going to the line out of the Bronx, New York himself. And he'll get one at the stripe. It's a 6-2 early start and a good one for the Blazers to get this underway. Anxious to see how this bunch does in this early part of the season. Chemistry can always be an issue, especially for a new ball club. And they started this one out well. Now a 7-2 lead. Make it 9-2, beg your pardon on that. So 9-2, Blazers ahead. And the Vipers with Cornelius Thomas. Power to the baseline and defense. Ruben Berry uh, offering that down on the glass to block that shot. And the Blazers looking for two more inside. Can't finish with Jackson. Ball tipped around and it comes down to the Vipers. And a nice stutter step move in the backcourt to get it up floor by Daryl White. He'll pull up for a three-pointer that doesn't go. One and done is Ruben Berry. Well, Berry's been good here early on to get that basketball back. We well, played about three and a half minutes gone by in quarter one, four 10 minute quarters and a foul on that shot, a blocking foul. And Ruben Berry, again, paying dividends. Boy, and a great start for Berry. He went to Danbury High School, played collegiately at, at Lethbridge College in California. And the big fellow's going to the line. He's already got himself a good start to this one. 9-2 coming into that trip. And they are not gonna give continuation on the shot. Boy, that's surprising. I thought that was an easy read on free throws for Barry, but instead the Blazers will have to inbound. They'll get it into Barry, long of the three-point line. He'll pump fake on the three and then pick up the dribble and have to get rid of it. Swandrick Miller goes in the corner. That high-ranking shot no good, and we'll see if they give shots here. I would think they would after that basketball. One off rim and came off for Marlon Hart, and Hart will get to the line. So already the Blazers are able to penetrate, get inside, draw contact, draw fouls, and that size mismatch is giving Georgia some problems here in the early going as Marlon Hart converts to make it a 10-2 game. We bring it to tonight from Columbus, Georgia. Hart, second one, no, and the rebound put back. Ruben Berry, he's got five now. And the Blazers could not have asked for a better start in this one. A 12-2 advantage in the opening three and a half. A tremendous start to the campaign. Barry on defense, getting around that defense, drawing contact inside. And I would think free throws forthcoming here for the Georgia Vipers. I like the uniforms for the Vipers. The color scheme, it's eye-catching. And we see Marcel Hawkins Go to the free throw line for the first time here tonight. Hawkins was 0 for 2 against the Dothan Snipers at the stripe. That one off the mark wide of the right. Hawkins did not get a free throw try against the Montgomery Knights, but he's combined for 20 points in two games and better than that, 25 rebounds in the two previous wins for the Georgia Vipers. So this is a guy that can pay you some dividends. Second one falls and Hawkins makes it a 12-3 affair. So the Blazers back with it with Hart. Speeds his way down the lane of the basket, rimmed it around, no good, missed it. Rebound, Georgia, they want to run. This can be one area where the Vipers might be able to take advantage of some of that height, height mismatch. You counter that with some speed, and Bill Reese is going to fill it up with a layup to make it now 12 to 5. And then Elijah Terrell, that three-point shot blocked as one of the Vipers got a hand on it. They outlet and driving layup, no good. And again, Barry, another rebound. Boy, he's a stat sheet stuffer early. Ruben Barry, five points, couple of rebounds. And the Blazers looking for more to the corner with Swandrick Miller, and he'll nail that three ball. As that makes it now 15 to five and an early double digit lead for the Southwest Florida Blazers. Swandrick Miller out of Alucella, Florida, and there's a top of the arc three that goes for the Georgia Vipers. That makes it now 15 to eight. So Hart trying to pass it sideline left, and that pass broken up with a foul called against Marcel Hawkins. Swandrick Miller played at Santa Fe High School, went to college in Arizona at Santa Fe College. Originally a native of Florida, though. And so now he plays for a club out of Southwest Florida and somewhat near his home here in Columbus, Georgia tonight. 
The Vipers on defense. Blazers enjoying a 15-8 cushion here first quarter. Here is Miller. Give it off left of the lane to one of the new inserts for the Blazers. Lloyd Jackson into the fray. He'll operate at the point. We'll see what they can do with him. Elijah Terrell gets the catch. Vipers trying to play a little better on the interior as far as defense and, and push the Blazers on perimeter. And we get a shot clock violation called against Southwest Florida. And so there is a defensive stand by the Vipers. And now they're trying to cut into a 15-8, seven-point deficit here just beyond midway through quarter number one. Greg Allen on triangle media by 1891. And on perimeter, we get a foul called against the Blazers, it appears to be. A sideline inbound coming up for the Vipers. Get a good look there at Georgia's Anthony Daniels. Daniels will inbound. Maybe. <laughs> 4.37 to go in the quarter, and we get our first in-game stoppage, it appears. So 15-8, the Blazers. It has been Reuben Berry in the early going. Five points for him. Five at a club's 15. And the Vipers have not been able to find the offensive footing yet so far on this end of the floor. We'll see what they get on this trip. Off the curl, Daryl White gets the catch. Here's Bill Reese. He had a driving layup already once tonight. Now he'll go to the free throw line after drawing contact there. And so White to the stripe. Trying to carve two more off a five point, or make it a five point differential. Currently it's seven. White sporting the, or Reese rather, sporting the fluorescent green shoes. So Bill Reese. Couple of free throws here. Vipers trailing 15-8 and can't cash the first one out. Vipers after tonight, they'll stay within the Southeastern Division. They'll get a matchup with the Mississippi Hawks and then the Knoxville Young Yellow Jackets before they get a second meeting against the Montgomery Knights, a team they beat by six earlier just prior to this matchup, 107-101. Bill Reese connects there. He's got three. The Blazers. The early lead in this one. Quandell Newton out for a right wing three. That's good. And now 18 for the Southwest Blazers. We crawl up on four minutes remaining here in this one. And another stoppage as some of the Blazers went down at a foul called. We're going to count that basket. I think they are. And the Georgia Vipers going to the line for one. And that's Bill Reese again headed to the stripe. And Reese makes that one. So he's got six in the contest. Across the four minute mark to go in the period. On the move, Lloyd Jackson. Swing a pass. Out high of the three point circle. Elijah Terrell out of Louisville, Kentucky. Can't triple, and the ball tipped to the sideline, kept alive by the Vipers, trying to make this a single digit or a single trip possession, but they can't as they turn it back over and a left side three, no good for the Blazers. And look at that height mismatch, and despite the height mismatch, the rebound comes initially to the Blazers. They turn it over and then preventing the Cortez Cheney breakaway, Lloyd Jackson's going to foul him instead. So 18-12 is where we sit. Late first quarter in this one. The Southwest Florida Blazers making their debut. They'll get the Dothan Snipers next. In fact, they'll play then tomorrow night. And then the Knoxville Young Yellow Jackets for them. And then contest with the Mississippi Hawks and Montgomery Knights. Uh, pile of teams in the Southeastern Division. Three off the mark that time for Anthony Daniels and a rebound down to the Blazers. You've got the Triangle Pacers out of North Carolina in this division. As that rudder down the lane, off the mark from Lloyd Jackson. Rebound the other way to the easy layup for Cortez Cheney, who's got his first two tonight. Well, if the Viper's going to do some good things, Cheney's a good place to start. He's combined for 44 points 
in the first two contests. Those are his first two here to make it now 18-14 as we get a 30-second timeout. A little over three minutes remaining here in this first quarter. The Whiteville Cool Cats, also out of North Carolina in the Southeastern Division. The Seven City Vets, they're out of Virginia. The Snipers out of Alabama. And the Palm Beach Cougars out of Palm Beach, Florida, round out the teams that comprise the Southeastern Division. All part of the Eastern Conference. There are 15 teams in the Western Conference in the PBA, 20 in the Eastern Conference. Here's Lloyd Jackson around the perimeter. Now, Reuben Berry, after starting out like a house of fire, he's been somewhat quiet lately. Good on ball defense, but Berry able to get around it and draw a foul. Man, he is an absolute load to try to handle here in this first quarter. The Georgia Vipers doing everything they can to try to contend with 6-7 Reuben Berry, who's got the handle to take the ball off the dribble too, and that just makes him even more of a weapon. So they'll stack this one up on the baseline. It'll be Marlon Hart to throw it in. Well, Barry's been really good here in his first quarter, trying to continue that here with a teardrop runner that doesn't go, and a good presence of mind not to challenge for that rebound. He was not in good position and would have probably picked up a foul instead. Passing on the three-point shot, going for the easier two-point jumper, and that's going to go. And so the Vipers, even though at sometimes it hasn't looked all that pretty tonight, they're within two at 18-16, and they tie up Jackson near the center stripe, but he's able to get out of trouble and give it to Miller. Challenge inside, feed it to the big man. He'll hit the front of the rim, get it back, put it again on rim, no good. The putback, though, is there. And so the Blazers make it now 20 to 16 with that bucket. As we wind our way to the end of quarter number one, rebound off the miss. Anthony Jackson gonna grab that. Lloyd Jackson, drop off pass to Barry for three. That would have been pretty. The rebound brought down by Anthony Jackson. He's on the right block, working on the doorstep. Hook it up, put it on rim. No, flipped up and in. They'll probably give that to Reuben Barry, who's got seven in the quarter, and then makes it 22-16. And Reuben Barry continues to be a problem for the Georgia Vipers with 90 to go in the quarter. Left wing three ball attempt away. No good. Rebound belongs one and done to the Florida Blazers. And Marlon Hart up the right wing. Hart explodes through traffic to the basket, draws a foul on Maurice Butler. And so Hart will get to the line. Hart with a three-point quarter. Oh, the Blazers have looked sharp here in the early going. 22-16, a six-point lead. They jumped out to a quick 12-2 lead in this period. At the free throw line, Hart converts. He's got four. We couldn't have asked for a better start if you're the Southwest Florida Blazers here in quarter number one. Marlon Hart, one more, up, nope. And the Vipers. And now 23-16 contest coming up on the final minute of play here in stanza one. Cornelius Thomas, a quiet first quarter, trying to move on Barry. That's a difficult assignment there if you're trying to move 6-7 out of the way and the athleticism that Barry's had here in this early part of this one. Down the lane again, the Blazers penetrate, but the kick to the corner, nobody home, and they'll turn it over instead, and so the Vipers get the ball back. Seven-point margin, 23-16, late first quarter. We'll get you caught up on all the numbers coming up on the halftime report. Glad to be a part of the 1891 group here as the Pro Basketball Association underway in its 2022 campaign across the lane at a good little finger roll by Anthony Daniels to score that and it's 23 to 18 now and a backcourt foul Marlon Hart he's been involved in a lot of this first quarter action for the Blazers and that will put the Vipers over the limit and so Southwest Florida going to the free throw line it looks like with Marlon Hart Now, the one thing you notice early in this game here as we are late quarter one, Hart no dice from the line. The Blazers have not gone to the bench much. We've seen Lloyd Jackson off the bench, and that's about it. They've gone only to six in this first quarter. No good on either free throw. Barry, hand fighting for the rebound, can't come up with it. But they do get an offensive board with Anthony Jackson. He'll miss the putback try. Boy, you miss two or three point blank shots right in the lane and don't get anything out of it. 
and a great defensive stand by the Vipers, preventing more points from going on the board. And it sits 23-18. And after all of that, a stoppage, and the Vipers will likely have possession. So a five-point margin could have been a lot worse with both Jackson and Barry missing on putbacks off that missed free throw. And the Vipers will get the ball to inbound. Cheney will do that. Give it off in the backcourt. One of the last offensive trips of this quarter and a travel, I would think, and he called no a bump to cause the travel against the Blazers. Saw one of the Southwest Florida players arguing for a travel, but the official says that was because your guy bumped him. So the Vipers will have to inbound just to the left of their own window. One of the last offensive trips of the period here. Final waning moments of the first quarter. In a five-point game. And after the, all of that is said and done, they'll end up at the free throw line with Maurice Butler. So Butler looking for his first points. The Vipers have gone a little deeper here in their bench in this first quarter. But we have not seen John Tavius Miles yet. And the reason I bring him up as Butler converts, Miles last year in an ABA game went for 40, 40 points and 12 assists in an ABA game. Butler makes one of two, 23-19. So he's got his first point, 10 to go in the quarter. Down the lane comes Anthony Jackson. And a foul on Georgia, I think. A lot of pointing and signaling going on. Jackson's going to end up at the free throw line. He's scored a couple in this game. He's going to the line for two here. Vipers out top with Maurice Butler trying to argue for an offensive foul. And Anthony Jackson can't convert at the free throw line in the first. So the Vipers will get, assuming they can grab the rebound here. Keep in mind, you got Reuben Terry there on the left side of the lane. In case this doesn't go from Jackson, Vipers might get one more shot. Second one up and in. So Vipers last crack at it here with five to go in the quarter in the 24-19 affair. Oh, they tried to go nifty on the pass underneath from Cortez Cheney, but he couldn't connect. So the Blazers inbound to Hart, and his three-quarter court shot is off the mark. 24-19, and we sit at the end of quarter number one as the Southwest Florida Blazers in their 2022 PBA debut lead the Georgia Vipers by five. Back with quarter two next. What happens when everything we know about something changes? I tell people all the time, this is the best American story you never heard. We're out hitting the pavement, talking to restaurants, talking to bars. I don't think of myself as a whiskey salesperson. I want you to know his name. Drink by drink, we're bringing this story to light. When we have to step back through the pages of history. It's so much more than whiskey. It's so much more than a brand. It's a movement. When we have to make amends and pay respect. We're honoring the greatest whiskey maker the world never knew. And it's beautiful. And give credit where credit is due. Uncle Nearest is the godfather of Tennessee whiskey, and the world needs to know it. What happens? We do it. <laughs> Uncle Nearest, it's more than whiskey. Getting ready to go for second quarter action from Columbus, Georgia. Greg Allen with you on Triangle Media by 1891. The Vipers with the opening possession. Bill Reese leading them through the first quarter with six points. Cornelius Thomas has five. And the Vipers get the opening possession sort of of the second. Cortez Cheney rescues that ball on the sideline. The Blazers, they have seen Swandrick Miller and Ruben Berry combined for 15. Miller leads them all with eight. That shot blocked underneath, and Miller ends up with a basketball. Miller's converted on two three-point shots in that first quarter, help padding the lead for the Blazers here on the road. Second home game of the season for the Vipers, and a spot up Bill Reese. Three is good out of the corner. He's got nine. And Boy, Reese has had a good start to this one here at the half. As they 
will wipe up a wet spot underneath the basket before the Blazers get back to work. So second quarter underway, Greg Allen with you in the Southeastern Divisional matchup, the 2022 debut for the Southwest Florida Blazers. Vipers trying to go to 3-0. and That three-point shot by Reese. Going to make it now 24-22. to A three the other way is good. And Marlon Hart, seven for him. He answers the three, and it's 27-22. to Back to a five-point game. Just underway in the second. Vipers with it there in the purple. And trying to get loose defensively with a reverse layup. That's going to fall. Looks like Anthony Daniels on the reverse. His second field goal off the bench for the Vipes. And that makes it 27-24. Good pace to this one. Not a lot of fouls called in the first quarter. On the move, Elijah Terrell. Haven't seen much from him. Cortez Cheney with the rebound off the miss on a bounce driving layup. No, as Barry knocked it away underneath. But they call a foul on Ruben Barry. And Barry has been active on both ends of the floor. Six points going for the defensive block there. He had one earlier in the first quarter. And instead, it'll put Cornelius Thomas at the free throw line. Thomas with five in quarter one. Looking to match his jersey number with this one and can't. So the margin stays three. We're just underway in the second. I guess if you're going to wait this long to start the season for the Southwest Florida Blazers, they go back to back. And they get the Vipers tonight, the Dothan Snipers coming up tomorrow. So got to make up some ground here. Second free throw good for Thomas. He's got six. Oh, a two-point game at 27 to 25. We are approaching a minute and a half gone by in the second. Hart with some fancy dribbling on chaining to the timeline out to a three ball by Elijah Terrell. He'll knock that home for his first points. And the product out of Louisville, Kentucky, who's about to have a birthday coming up in 10 days, makes it now a 28, 20, make, check, check that 30-25 lead. Put the points on the wrong side there. So 30-25 and after that basket, 30-27 is where we sit Southwest Florida with the lead. And a foul the other way. Early in quarter two. So the Vipers 30-27 trailing. It is Blazer basketball with Terrell after that made three. Trying to get into the heart pressured by Cheney who knocked it back out. So we'll do that all over again. Elijah Terrell went to Corian Day Central High School. Up top, Quandel Newton for three. That's off the mark, no good, and Thomas runs it down. So there's another bench guy for the Blazers trying to go a little deeper on this rotation. That three ball left wing, no good. Rebound defensive, and the Blazers get the ball back. Just over two minutes gone by. Hart for three, second quarter off the mark, wide right with a triple try. And purple there for the rebound as the Vipers bring it back down floor and knifing his way down the lane. I think that was Bill Reese on the drive. He's got 11. And Reese has been active at the offensive end for Georgia. The leading score right now for their group with 11. A step back long jumper doesn't go. And Reese tries to track that rebound, does and stays inbound on the sideline. Little drop off pass to Daryl White for a moving three ball and he'll hit it. And look at this, the Vipers are right back in it now after they get the bucket from Reese. The three there from White, they've got a 32-30 lead. One of their first leads of the game after they trailed early 12-2. And did the Vipers just get the ball back? I think they did on a Blazer miscue. So 32-30, Georgia in front. They've trailed by as many as 10. Twice, 12-2 and 18-8 down the lane. Now they're going to add a couple to the lead. It's 34-30. to 30. And a scramble near the center stripe. And we likely get a held ball. And the Vipers loving the aggressiveness on the defensive end of the floor. And it's Bill Reese to stick his nose back in things. So a timeout with 628 at the 30, and the lead for the Vipers is four at 34 to 30. And boy, they have stood tall here to start this second quarter. 
They trailed 24-19 coming into it, and they have quickly turned that around as they have outscored the Blazers to the tune of 15-6 to start the second quarter. So the Vipers able to stiffen defensively. Boy, he could have caught a push off there on Bill Reese. They didn't. He dropped it off to Cortez Cheney. And down the lane, we've got issues on the Blazers' defensive end. And as Reese able to draw contact, Cheney will inbound. Boy, a whale of a start for the Vipers here in the second quarter. 34-30, they lead. Coming off a six-point win over the Montgomery, Alabama Knights. Long inbound to the sideline. Out of the corner. Short from three. Cheney trying to get there, but it ends up out of bounds. By the number of points that this Vipers team has scored, here's a driving layup on the offensive end after the Vipers didn't get back defensively. And Miller, who put that basket in, almost had another one on a defensive strip. And instead, I think Miller's going to pick up a foul trying to get that ball back in a scramble. So Miller's got 10. 34-32 our score. And if you're going to average 106 and a half points a game, now granted, super small sample size. It's been two games, folks. They've scored 106, though, at 107. 15 points in the first three minutes of a quarter, like what the Vipers have done here to start the second, is how you get to that point total. And as Cheney comes down the lane, Miller gets called for a foul trying to pick his pocket. And Georgia gets the ball back. I mean, you had the first quarter, and the Vipers were sitting on less than 20. They weren't even on pace to average 80 tonight. Pull up baseline jumper, empty, no good. Rebound Miller, bothered by Cheney, trying to get out of the backcourt, and lost it on the end line, and Cheney got the ball back. Didn't really like the clapping in the face of Miller, and neither did Miller, but the Georgia Vipers do have possession. Didn't like the way Cortez Cheney approached that after he did a good job to get the turnover and then sort of let Miller know about it, and that can make things get a little chippy. Cheney on the three ball, nope. Reese trying to hand fight for the rebound. Comes down with the behind the back dribble by Elijah Terrell, who got stripped. Cheney took it away, went to the rim and lays it in. And Cortez Cheney, who's been held in check tonight, has four. And it's 36 to 32, the lead for the Vipers. And maybe that can get Cheney going. And now we do so see some extracurriculars take place. And this all started with Cheney after the strip and the turnover when he got Miller to go out of bounds with it. He sort of clapped in his face and that can sort of ignite things. And with 5.26 to go in the half, we see an exchange near the center stripe. It may not have involved Cheney or Miller, but that's what got this all going. I didn't like it when it happened. I noted it right away. Miller came over and got back in Cheney's face. And as they lined up for the inbound, Cheney kind of pushed Miller away. And then you get an exchange like we see here in a game that is 36-32 and up until this point has really been very well played. The two teams have been composed. There's been none of this shenanigan stuff going on like we have seen here in the last 90 seconds. And that's when the officiating comes in to kind of keep things clean and calm things down and not let this escalate. But up until that little fracas, things have been, have been really good. The two teams have played hard. It's been clean. And the Vipers with Cheney, he'll stay on the floor. Looks like he'll inbound just to the left of the center stripe, and then they get the final couple of particulars to sort out before we get back to live action here. So we're at all stop here, not quite mid-second quarter. And a hot start to the second by the Georgia Vipers. And we get some particulars to sort out near the Blazer bench. Four point Viper advantage. And it looks like we're close to getting back to ready to go. And after it's all said and done, they'll actually have the Blazers with possession. So back to work. Bill Reese going to defend on ball against Lloyd Jackson. That's how we start with a high screen roll from Anthony Jackson. Give it off to Newton back into the corner. Blazers, weak side, good defensive block by the Vipers. Or do they call a foul or they call them that clean? They're going to say clean block, out of bounds. 
Blazers continue with it with Lloyd Jackson. Got to pay attention to the shot clock, however. They try to go in the middle to Ruben Berry, who the Blazers have done not that great of a job to keep involved in the offense. And here he gets stripped. Boy, Berry was great at the start. Reverse layup for the Vipers is good. And Daryl White's got five, and the lead grows to six, 38-32. Ruben Berry's been sort of quiet since he really, at the start of the game, he was the biggest problem for the Vipers. And here it's a Quandell Newton triple. Well, that'll help the Blazers cause 38-35 as we're better than halfway home in the second. Reese had a great late first quarter, early second, misses that three reverse. Put back, though, count that and the foul. And the Georgia Vipers going to the line. They're sitting on 40. The lead is five, and they can make it six here at the stripe. So 40-35. Looks like Marcel Hawkins, yes. It is Hawkins who's got three. And he'll get a chance at the free throw line after a timeout. So 40-35 with just better than midway through the second quarter. You can see 435 remaining on the clock. The Vipers trying to keep this tremendous start to quarter two rolling with one free throw coming up here for Bill Reese. Up, oh, check that, Marcel Hawkins, beg your pardon. Reese has had such a, a, a great second quarter. Why not put him at the line? He's the man in the fluorescent kind of yellow shoes there on the right side of the key for the Georgia Vipers. Hawkins at the line, converts, cashes out the three-point play. He's got four, and it's 41-35, our score. And here's Ruben Berry in a drop-off pass. The Blazers... They've kind of gotten away from what got them that early first quarter lead. The rebound on the triple miss. They eventually crawl out in the corner, hoist another three. That's not how they got that 12-2 and then 18-8 lead. They didn't just stand out there and shoot threes. They got it inside. They did it with first Reuben Berry, then Anthony Jackson. And then all of a sudden, when Georgia started to score, the Blazers, the kind of way they've gone about things has been stand outside the three-point line and let it fly. That time, they'll convert and knock it down to make it 41 to 38. But that's not, at least in the first quarter, that wasn't their bread and butter. We'll see how that goes season long. But at the start of this game, that was not what built them that early lead. It was points in the paint, strong athletic possessions. And here defense gonna get in the ball back as Quandell Newton, and he got back picked by Cheney, but Cheney ran out of real estate on the end line. And so the Blazers get the ball back. Quandell Newton, he's an interesting 6'6 man out of First Baptist Academy High School, played at the Citadel and then Claflin University in South Carolina. So he has been around the block in the basketball ranks. Here's inside an effort from Anthony Jackson. No good, rebound banged around and Cheney picks it back out. Stutter step move at the top of the three point line on a drop off pass and a a lot of time to think about that three, but it wouldn't go for Thomas, and the Blazers dodge a bullet and get the ball back. 41-38 margin three. Euro step, Ruben Berry couldn't convert it, and then got called for an offensive foul. And that's one of the few times tonight that Ruben Berry, great idea, but probably tried to do just a little bit too much, coming down the lane like a freight train and ran over a, a Viper. Boy, that Euro step has become the kind of in vogue thing, and when you got a guy with the size of Berry at 6'7 doing that, that is awfully tough to defend, but credit the Viper defender for able to draw the charge and get the ball back. 41-38, approaching three minutes remaining in the half. Cheney had to get rid of it, didn't. Newton picked it off. And Quandell Newton, you would think he has earned some extra playing time in the second half the way he has played here in quarter two. Left wing Terrell three, hit one earlier. That one doesn't go, rebound volleyed around, high off the glass, still loose on the floor, and the Vipers pick it up at a long outlet to the sideline, able to stay in bounds. They'll settle it with Thomas, but he'll give it to a driving Bill Reese. He'll finish. I would assume they would give basket and continuation. And another possible three-point play for the Vipers. And this time it is Bill Reese that's able to pay dividends and get the transition bucket into the line, I would assume, for one. Yep, 43-38. Lead back to five. Boy, this has been a solid first half of basketball. We had a little mini blow up for about a minute and a half, two minutes there 
uh, right around the midway stage of quarter two. But other than that, this has been very well played, very entertaining, especially after the Vipers closed that 10-point deficit. They went from 18-8 to to 18-16, an eight-point run, and it's been close ever since. They trailed by five. The Vipers did it the quarter. It's now 43-38. It'll be Reese to the line as Bill Reese, a 13-point performance for him. Trying to extend the lead to six. Late second quarter out of Columbus, Georgia tonight. One more for Reese. Can't add the extra penny. And it's loose on the floor, and Marlon Hart has played a really good game, able to eventually somewhat corral the rebound enough to draw a foul. And so we'll walk to the other end. It's going to be an inbound, it looks like, for the Blazers on this near side sideline. I like what Quandell Newton has brought off the bench for the Southwest Blazers. Anthony Jackson coming down the left side of the paint to the basket, drop off pass. And they keep it with Hart for three. It's away. Nope. Rebound. Cheney's got it. Cheney's been active in this second. There's a little bit of a circus shot that won't fall for the Vipers. They do get an offensive rebound in the lane. Turn around. Wild shot. No. And this time it's Elijah Terrell that will try to settle things. But he got picked in the backcourt and out of bounds off the Vipers. So it's gotten a little ragged here in the last four minutes. The Blazers trail by five and lose it. Vipers back with it. Reese, this time the distributor, loved the pass. Couldn't get his teammate to finish. And a rebound put back try also doesn't go. That was Cornelius Thomas on the misses. Here, Reese again. This time he'll drop it off. That was a great decision. How about that from, I believe it was Ruben Berry that time. He was the man that picked up the foul on the Eurostep effort. This time the drop off pass to Marlon Hart. And Ruben Berry with a great decision to say, you know what, I was just here. I just committed a foul. I got a two on one. Let's give it to the trailer. And able to finish was Hart. He's got nine and it's 43-40. Seven on the shot clock. Coming across the lane, Cornelius Thomas has eight. 45-40 is where we sit as the Vipers back out to a five point lead. Marlon Hart. Inside this time to Jackson. I love the no call and the foul. And Anthony Jackson going to convert. First time in a while he's been on the board. He had five early in the ball game. Makes it a three-point margin. This thing continues to be close as we cross 80 seconds remaining. Cornelius Thomas on a drive. Empty on the shot. Trying to stay in bounds with the basketball. The Blazers, they'll do so with Elijah Terrell. He'll spot up from three. It's a big one, and he got it to go. Elijah Terrell ties us at 45s as we're about a minute away from half. How about that shot? Just walk into it to the top of the circle. A nice little early birthday present for Elijah Terrell on that shot. In the lane, Vipers, no. Rebound tip corralled by Newton. Long outlet, bad decision there. It was a two-on-one for the opponent. And it was a takeaway by the Georgia Vipers. Cheney out of the corner. Good action here in the final 40 seconds of the second quarter. And a ball game that is now knotted at 45 all. Pull up, right of the lane, in and out, no good. Cheney runs down the rebound. Give to a cutting. Thomas, put it up, float it home. Thomas with 10. And the Vipers back up by two here late in the second quarter. 20 seconds remaining in a two-point game, 47-45. Boy, this has been a really top flight early season matchup here in the Pro Basketball Association. In and out that time on a shot. The put back though underneath. I think that was Ruben Berry. If it is, he's got nine and we're deadlocked at 47. We'll check that one at the half and that will be the half right there. So 47 apiece is where we sit at intermission. We've decided nothing after the Blazers led the Vipers by five at the end of the first quarter. It was a great start to the second quarter by Georgia, and it is 47 all. And boy, after we get through 20 minutes, the Vipers very much in the neighborhood for being on pace what they did in their first two contests, scoring 106 and 107. Not quite to that pace now, but that second quarter was a lot better for them when they scored 28 points to the Blazers, 23. Halftime in Columbus. We're back with more after this. Triangle Media by 1891 coverage of the Pro Basketball Association.
Italian Twine offer detail and luxury with styles for both men and women. I love them. Clean, go good with suits like you say. Two young brothers, HBCU grads. Just called Italian Twine. It's just a black owned watch company. And you know, I just, I'd like to support all black everything. Also, uh, shout out to Italian Twine for this amazing watch. This is the one my wife got me. Love this watch, one of my favorite pieces. I've always been in a watch, I've always been collecting watches, man, and I really like this. The Virginia based company, founded in 2014, has been featured in Men's Health, The Rob Report, Black Enterprise, Huffington Post, New York Magazine, Cosmopolitan, and more. The actual band is interchangeable. This is a fire brand, dope watch, man. Whale of a ball game here from Columbus, Georgia as we get ready for second half action. We'll take you through some of the first half numbers coming up as we go along here early in this third quarter. Greg Allen with you. Uh, part of the 1891 staff, Triangle Media bringing you coverage of the Pro Basketball Association, and we are underway early in the third, and the opening shot no good, and we're going to start the second half just like we did the way the first half began. Ruben Berry dominating inside after the Marlon Hart miss. The putback is good. Berry's got 11, and right now that puts him out in front as far as leading scores for the Blazers. Vipers miss on the offensive end. The ball out of bounds will take you through some of those first half numbers, including those two from Berry. He's got 11. Swandrick Miller's got 10. They got Marlon Hart with nine. Boy, the balance in the stat sheet for the Blazers has been good as Elijah Terrell comes down the lane, lost it, got it back, and decides to give it to the trailer. Hart misses a three, rebound of the corner, and the Vipers look like they have it. Try to stay in bounds, and they do. They get six points from Quandell Newton off the bench, six from Elijah Terrell, and they get seven from Anthony Jackson for the Blazers. They have got 47 at the half. After that basket by Barry, it's now 49-47. Here's a baseline pull-up jumper, no good. Uh, we may have a whistle on that play. Vipers at the half as we start the third here. Cornelius Thomas leads all scores with 14. Bill Reese had a great second quarter. He's got 13, and after that, it really falls off. They get five from Daryl White, four from Cortez Chaney and Marcel Hawkins and Anthony Daniels, and they get a pair from Otis Jones. So that is where we sit as we start the third. Right now, 49-47 after the Berry basket. The Blazers back in front by two. Vipers in the purple. The Blazers in the dark uniforms trimmed in orange and an offensive foul. The Blazers will get the ball back. And the inbound Terrell lets it catch up to him and then picks it up and brings it ahead. So just underway, early third. Terrell. On a lob pass inside, wanting Jackson. Couldn't finish the first time. Rebound, Barry, turn around in the paint. No, may have been contacted and fouled. And Reuben Barry, all six foot seven of him, headed to the free throw line. I just, I still wish the Blazers, when they got Reuben Barry going in the opening three minutes of the game, Vipers could not stop this guy. And they sort of just went away from that. They did get Anthony Jackson involved a little bit. He's very similar to the the skill set that Barry's got as Barry drops a free throw. He's got 12 now, and it's 50-47. But it, it kind of turned into a three-point shooting party as far as the Blazers were concerned. As, and that at least helped to get the Vipers back in the ball game. Second free throw, no good. But Barry with an offensive <laughs> rebound. Spins, put it back up, couldn't finish. And it'll be long to the Georgia Vipers. Not to say that the, the Blazers aren't going to be a good three-point shooting team. This is game one. We don't know what we'll to see this ball club a lot more throughout the season. But I can tell you early on, they were getting some stuff going inside with the combo of Jackson and Barry that'll really help your ball club be successful. At the foul line, we see Daryl White after the basket converted. He's got seven. And he can tie things at 
50. We were 47 all at the break. Vipers outscored the Blazers 28-23 in quarter two after they trailed 24-19 to get there. That free throw no good. We stay 50-49. White's got seven. Hart at the other end. Good, and now we're getting almost fouls on every trip. As long as they give continuation, I don't see why they wouldn't. It'd be a basket and an and one for Marlon Hart. He'd have 11, and he does. So 52-49, back to a three-point stretch. A lot of stop and go basketball here in this third. So Marlon Hart, originally hailing from Queens, New York, knocks out the free throw, 53-49. As Hart matches Barry with 12, and the lead for the Blazers is four. Cheney trying to take three off that, can't. Hart and Terrell come together for the rebound. Elijah comes out with it. And a teardrop floater in the lane, missed it, got it back with a nice offensive rebound. Now Hart on a kick out. Here's Barry trying the three ball, no good, wouldn't go. Rebound loose on the weak side and put back up by Swandrick Miller, who's got 12. And it's 55-49, margin six. So the Blazers again inside. Look where they're getting their points. They get a loose ball and they'll turn it over, will the Vipers? It was Hart that got a hand on it and we'll see if they can do something with it here. Up the right wing, in the paint, teardrop floater. Comes off the mark that time. Terrell wish he would have finished that shot. That would have been exactly what we're talking about here. And in the backcourt, we get a foul called against Southwest Florida. But they've gotten stuff at the free throw line. They got points inside from Ruben Berry. This team is better, talking about the Blazers, when they work the ball from the outside in. You can pass it around the perimeter and take looks and get defenders to come out and guard you. But that's when you have to have the extra pass and move the ball around and get it inside. And the Blazers have the height and the guys that can do that. They did it early in the first half. They've done it here early in the second half. Great pump fake down low as Marcel Hawkins going to score two. And there's a great old school sort of basketball play with the pump fake. Hawkins now has six and it's 55 to 51. That's kind of a lost art. And boy, Hawkins used that to per perfection. And if you can get some of these big blazer guys to do what Hawkins just did, that even helps that inside game we're talking about. So 55-51. We've played two and a half of the third. I'd love to see this blazer squad about three or four games from now and take a look at some of their numbers and see what they're putting up and see how they're playing and see where they're... Now, again, we're not going to track all kinds of stats and, and shot charts and stuff like that, but I'd love to know how much of their offense comes from 10 feet in versus, say, from 15 out, right? Out around the three-point line, beyond the three-point line. As soon as I looked at the, the numbers, and I'm talking height... Uh, on some of these guys. I just thought, man, you got a bunch of guys that are 6'6 six, six and 7s, and one guy's 6'10. You can, you can win a ton of basketball games if you can get those guys to have the ball in the right place. Vipers have it here, though, out of the corner on the offensive end. Hawkins looking for a rebound put back. Ends up with a basketball. Great baseline spin. Hawkins forced it up. No, didn't go. Trying to get his own rebound again, but couldn't. And the Blazers end up with it. I thought it was Anthony Jackson. Down floor comes Terrell. He'll give it off right wing to Hart. And did he travel? Yep. So the Vipers get the ball back. First of back-to-back -back games in as many days for the Southwest Florida Blazers. They get the Dothan Snipers tomorrow night. Here comes Daryl White, guarded by Elijah Terrell. Passed it right to a Blazer. And a two-on-two -two forcing a shot off window. No, Hart the put back, the kiss and the basket. And Marlon Hart's got 14 after the Quandell Newton miss. But Quandell Newton, he's an interesting guy. He came off the bench in the first half. He's getting an early look here in the third, and he was really good early. Had a couple of threes. There's a block shot by Anthony Jackson. Hart up four and a two-on-one. Bill Reese back. Here's Swandrick Miller on a give up. Terrell feet inside. Nice defense and able to get back defensively for the Vipers. They've got a two-on-one the other way, and they will cash that out. Reese on the assist, and the Viper is able to convert. They'll score with Daryl White, who's got nine, and it's 57 to 53. And boy, that was a big exchange right there. Cheney, after a turnover, gave it up, but before that, he's fouled, and probably a good decision to foul him by Elijah Terrell. 
Well, it looked like the Blazers had opportunities a couple of trips ago. They don't convert. The Vipers come down and do get points. That instead making it a four-point game instead of an eight-point contest. That's, that's a big exchange right now. Here's Reese out of the corner for the Vipers as we're coming up on midway through the third. Bill Reese, 13 points, second leading scorer on the team. He of the fluorescent colored shoes with the basketball and a handoff to Daryl White. Off balance, moving three, no good. Rebound by Anthony Jackson. Product out of Fort Myers, Florida in Anthony Jackson. He'll give it up. And Miller's got it at the head of the circle. Looking to Newton, but he'll keep it. Elbow jumper, empty, no good. Rebound offensive and back out to Hart. He'll try it from the foul line. This one will count for two. No, Newton, good possession for the Blazers, but now they got to get points out of it. Newton can't. Another offensive rebound. Jackson, hit it in one coming up. Anthony Jackson, not only might they get two, they might get three, but look again where they came from. Inside, and Anthony Jackson makes it 59-53. And the Blazers are up by six. Well, that was a perfect sequence to explain what we're talking about here. And Anthony Jackson, now granted, they missed a bunch of shots to get there, but you get the big guys the ball where they can do something with it. And Anthony Jackson is the fourth Blazer in double figures. Stop and go move by Cornelius Thomas, trying to move inside on Newton. Comes across the lane, no, tipped, no. Rebound loose, Newton hand fighting for it in a corner, and the ball out of bounds. We'll see who they give it to. But I just thought that last possession for the Blazers was a microcosm of what we talked about all game long. They've, again, I'm not charting the misses. I can tell you they've converted five three-point shots, make it six three-point shots. So that's 18 points, that's not bad. But Ruben Berry and Anthony Jackson have combined themselves for 22, and they've been a problem inside. And Anthony Jackson with that last exchange on the end one, making it 60-53. If, if I'm watching this game and watching this the way this team plays, that's your bread and butter if you're the Southwest Florida Blazers. 60-53 is where we sit. We're better than halfway home in the third. We get a stoppage with the Georgia Vipers trying to stay undefeated here in this early portion of the new Pro Basketball Association season. They are 2-0. So this will be a big conference divisional win for the Blazers if they can get it. They try to inbound a Newton. That pass a little too tall, and Cheney took it away. He races the other end with Hart. Finger roll up. Good. Foul to go with it. I Maybe. It looks like it, the way Cheney's going to the free throw line. And Cheney has six. And make it 60-55 <laughs> after that basket. And Cortez Cheney this season is four of five at the free throw line. Coming into today, had gone for 44 points in two games. And the Vipers really have not been able to get this guy going the way he's been going in previous games. I wouldn't think at least. He's not putting up those kind of numbers, but he's got seven now. He makes it 60-56. They're in the game. It's close. And I think the way Cheney likes to play, that contact you're seeing right there, getting Marlon Hart to try a tough 15-foot fadeaway that didn't go, if the official's not going to call that kind of contact that Cheney just unloaded on Hart, the Vipers can do some good things because Cheney is not going to shy away from any kind of physical play. That is part of his game. And if the, he can play that way, boy, that'll help the Vipers cause. Here's a run out layup off a of Blazer turnover, and that layup does not go. Rebound Miller, and the Blazers get the ball back on the offensive end into a crowd and back out on perimeter. Great pump fake on a three by Hart on Cheney to open himself up and just knock it down. 17 for Marlon Hart, and it's 63 56. Bill Reese, here he comes. Look at the rim protection from Newton, but a foul. Oh, there's another of the long arm six foot six guys for the orange clad Blazers playing defense, but they call the foul. And so Bill Reese will head to the line, but a great opportunity for Quandell Newton. Just got part of the body. 
And so free throws for Reese. Reese has hit a couple at the line tonight. Bill Reese up. Yep. He's got the first. He'll look for 15 now. As he makes it 57 for the Vipers in a six-point game. Can't hit that one, but an offensive rebound. And so 63-57, there's a charge if I ever saw one. They don't call that. Wow. And Newton grabs the rebound. I thought for all the world that had to be a charge coming down the lane on the passing crash. Newton gets it in the corner. And we get another stoppage with the ball out of bounds, and we'll see who we give this to. Looks like the Blazers will keep it, 63-57. Third quarter action from Columbus, Georgia. Greg Allen with you on the call from Triangle Media by 1891 and thrilled to have you in the audience tonight. Blazers have looked well. This is their first game of the year, keep in mind. 63-57. Hart, three ball over Reese. Nope. Jackson tracks down the offensive rebound. He's going to shoot the three. That's not in the repertoire. I wouldn't think. Hart with a reverse layup. Put back. Got it to go. Marlon Hart's got 19. And it's 65-57. And the Vipers better stiffen here. Cheney. Right of the paint. No. Got his own miss. And they'll set up the offense. Feed it to the baseline. Turn around jumper. That's going to fall. And make it 65-59. So the Vipers add two. And the Blazers can't get him back on the offensive end as Reese ended up with a basketball. Got rid of it to Cheney. Cheney on the move in the crowd. Great weak side pass, reverse layup. And that is how the Vipers can excel offensively. You get Cheney in the open floor and kind of let him do his thing. And it's 65-61. Newton on the doorstop. Stripped on the way up. Cheney back with it. He's got a two-on-two -two again. We'll see what he does here. He's going to keep it. Take. Pull up. In the paint. No, it didn't go. But got his own miss again. They can stay with it. Reese was open for a blink from three, but didn't squeeze it. 65-61. And a whistle and a stoppage underneath. Right, Cheney can be electric in the open floor. And he's such a good distributor, too. That's the thing. He's gone for seven tonight, and we gave you some of the offensive numbers from previous games, but he had 10 assists against the Dothan Snipers, three steals. He had six assists, six steals, in the win over the Montgomery Knights. He's, he's kind of the, the Swiss Army Knife kind of guy, right? The jack-of-all-trade, do-it-all kind of guy. And again, you allow that physicality that, that he really embraces Boy, this, this guy can be a weapon. Talking about number four there in purple. And Cortez Cheney at the free throw line, though. It's Marcel Hawkins. And he gets that one to hop on rim about five times before it falls in to make it 65 to 62. And boy, the Vipers were in a spot moments ago. At 65-67, there's not been a lot of separation in this game since the 18-8 start for the Blazers as Hawkins drops the second. He's got eight. It's a two-point game again right now. It was in the verge of being 10 moments ago. So 65-63, to out of the corner, Lloyd Jackson for a Elijah Terrell three that doesn't go. And to put back, try it again, going to the free throw line because the Vipers can't match up with those big guys inside. And here comes Ruben Berry. Well, this has been a noticeably strategic type of game. Vipers have shot it fairly well. They don't have that kind of inside presence like the Blazers do. So they've had to do it kind of different ways, get in transition. Bill Reese had a great second quarter, but a lot of those were, again, on the move, in traffic, inside baskets. They probably had to rely on the three a little bit more tonight. Here's Ruben Berry. He's got 13, makes that one. It's a three-point game. But for the Blazers, when they can do the work inside, boy, that has just been evident really since halfway through quarter two when they got away from that. Berry 
misses that second free throw tie, so we stay a three-point game. The Blazers get an offensive rebound. Miller wants three more from perimeter. That one didn't go. Love the shot, though, just didn't fall. So the Vipers back with it, and that's where the three-point shot for the Blazers can be a weapon. Extra possessions, right? Get an offensive rebound and try to knock one in from three. Now they go home run. Look at this. Barry in the open floor, and he missed it. Oh, my. Ruben Barry had an absolute breakaway two-hand powerhouse dunk, and he missed it. Oh, we'll see if those come back to haunt the Blazers. Cheney for three at the other end. That would have been a dagger, but didn't go, and it's out of bounds to the Blazers. They'll have it. Oh, Barry, every day of the week wants that last one back. Boy, if I'm a Blazer point guard, I go right back inside to Ruben Barry. You know he's thinking about it, trying to erase the fact that he missed that dunk. Go right back to the big fella. Get him his confidence right back. We'll see if they try to. They try to go on the weak side of the bounce. Cross-court pass. It's picked off. Cheney, two on one. Oh, he's such a great distributor, but the teammate couldn't finish. And now the Blazers come the other way quickly up floor with Lloyd Jackson to Miller for three. No. And Barry was sort of there in the rebound area, but couldn't grab it. Powering his way to the basket. Empty on the first shot. Put back is good, though, for the Vipers. And that makes it a one-point game. At 66 to 65 in the final minute here of this quarter. Jackson on the doorstep, puts those two in. He's got 12. 68-65. Well, we are in for some kind of a fourth quarter. This third quarter has been brilliant. Lob pass underneath inside, pump a couple of times. I think it's Hawkins on the bucket. And it's 68-66. And one of the final offensive trips of the period for the Blazers with 17 to go in the quarter. And a one-point lead. 68-67, beg your pardon. Check that score. That one falls off the rim, no. Rebound swat around as Ruben Berry trying to grab it around a Viper. and ends up out of bounds. And they'll give it to Georgia. So down one. Looking for the home run inbound. They wanted to try it. Cheney's got it. Clock running out. Up the left wing. Three ball in the air. Got it from the corner. And Georgia takes the lead to the fourth with that shot. It is 70 to 68 through three. And don't go anywhere. We are in for some kind of a final 10 minutes from Columbus right after this. Whoa, personal foul. What the feezy? You can't use a beard trimmer below the 50 yard line. This is the Waterproof Lawnmower 4.0 by Manscaped. What's the difference? It's got new skin safe technology to help reduce cuts and nicks. It's powerful. Get gentle, just like me. Dog, I appreciate you. Boop. Hey, watch out. Uh, I'm not ticklish. Get yours at manscaped.com. Start of the final quarter from Columbus, Georgia. This one has been a good one. Greg Allen in your ear with 1891 coverage. Triangle Media bringing it to you. And early Southeast Divisional matchup in the Eastern Conference. That three-point shot by Cornelius Thomas to cap the third gave the Vipers a two-point lead. They outscore the Blazers 23-21 in the third quarter and lead by two to go to the fourth. So 70-68 is where we sit. Vipers will have it after the loose ball goes out of bounds. Oh, what a three-point shot to cap the quarter. That long inbound comes into nobody. It's free for the taking, and the Blazers come down floor, and Ruben Berry with a basket and no foul, so he'll just add two, and he ties us at 70s. So settle in for the final stanza of this one. It has been a good one. 70-70, here's Cortez Cheney distributing again to the right wing. Vipers underneath, points inside, and Marcel Hawkins gave it a go and able to draw a foul. I think that foul's coming on Anthony Jackson, the way the official's indicating, if I can read that correctly. And so Marcel Hawkins, who is part of that balanced Viper offense, 
Thomas with the three-point shot to cap the third, leads the way with 17. Reese has 14. Then you got Hawkins and Daniels, 10 each. Nine from Daryl White, seven from Chaney, but you know he can score. Well, this team has got some offense. And the first one rolls home for Marcel Hawkins, who now has 11. And the Vipers up 71-70, just underway in the fourth quarter. And keep in mind, it's the first of back-to-backers for the Blazers. Second free throw, good. So Hawkins with a dozen. Two-point lead, Vipers in front, Blazer ball. Long up floor, bounce pass into the corner. Reese trying to set a perimeter screen and then gets the hand to Arberry, beg your pardon. Ruben Berry, rather, with that screen and the miss out of the corner. Take away Cheney on a run out layup, good. So Cortez Cheney's got nine. And it's a quick start to the fourth for the Georgia Vipers. Down floor on a no look, sort of behind the back drop off pass. Ruben Berry ends up with it. He'll spin into the paint. Float one up with the right hand. It comes off awkwardly. No good. Chaney poked it back, but only Blazers there to grab it. And here comes Lloyd Jackson. He gets down deep in perimeter. Back out for a three. That's good inside out basketball. They miss it. Ruben Berry ends up with a loose basketball left of the lane. Trying to work inside. Oh, going Kareem, but the hook shot didn't go. And the rebound out of the Vipers, but I like the ingenuity from Ruben Berry. And a man in his back and thought, yeah, you know what? I've seen this on TV. Let's flip that up and see if that'll go. Entry pass in the Vipers. And it's going to be called off of Barry, much to his chagrin. He thought that was just off of a Viper and out of bounds. But the official says it was off his hand and the defensive reach. And so Georgia will get it back. 74-70 early in the fourth. Jackson fronting the inbounder. Comes in long now to Cornelius Thomas. Just underway in the fourth. Stutter step move on Swandrick Miller. Trying to get around him. High screen that he didn't rub properly off of. Doesn't matter, explodes to the rim, lays it in. And all of a sudden, Cornelius Thomas, who capped the third with that three, has given Georgia a six-point lead here. Two minutes gone by in the fourth and a takeaway. Open floor. Here comes a run-out layup attempt. That is good. It is 78-70. to Thomas has 21. And a timeout for Southwest Florida. And it's one of the largest leads of the night for the Vipers with over two minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. An eight-point advantage. They led by five at 45-40. to 40. But they haven't had very many sizable leads. Vipers led 38-32. There's a six-point lead. But right now, it's at eight. They almost had the ball back off the inbound. The give inside to a cutting Jackson. Nice play. Jackson's got 14, 78, 72. Now it's Cortez Cheney's turn. Two and a half into the final stanza from Columbus. Boy, it'd be a big, big divisional win if the Blazers can hang on and get this thing. Contested three. Oh, they're not going to call that. They're just going to say Cheney just missed it that badly that it was an air ball out of bounds. It was not blocked. The other way comes Terrell. He'll pull up right of the lane and hit it. He's got eight. His first basket that comes inside the three-point circle. And boy, it's exactly what the Blazers needed, a little mini 4-0 run to keep this thing close. It's 78-74 in the fourth. We'll run you through some of the numbers coming up on our post-game show when we're done and set the scene for what these two teams have coming up on the landscape next. Finger roll layup attempt is good. And that makes it now 80-74. Here's Terrell on the move, long distance three, no good. And Anthony Daniels grabbed that rebound after he had that last basket. Anthony Daniels had a good third quarter. He's got 12 in the game for Georgia. Daniels had a couple of possessions almost in a row in transition. Blazers looked to be at a stretch in the third quarter where they were kind of running out a little bit of gas. Teardrop floater in the paint hits for Daryl White. Are we counting that? I think we are. White's got 11. And that would make the Vipers have five guys in double figures, and Cortez Cheney has nine. That basket makes it 82 to 74. And this free throw by Daryl White can put the Vipers ahead by the most they've led by in this game. This would make it nine. 
He does. 83-74. Daryl White with 12. Boy, and another stretch here for the Blazers where they really have to get a couple of possessions in a row that result in points or at least not let this lead get any worse. And sitting there chucking threes like that is not the way to do it. You got to find guys like Anthony Jackson or Reuben Berry down the lane. Vipers just now feeling it on the offensive end. They add two more in transition. And the Blazers are in trouble. They get a tie up. 85 to 74. Starting to pull away here in the fourth. Haven't quite played four minutes of an 11 point game. That is not where you want to be if you're the Southwest Florida Blazers who led 18 to eight. But after the Vipers carved that down to 18, 16, it has been nip and tuck the rest of the way until this fourth quarter. In fact, the Vipers led by two going to the fourth on a third quarter closing three. That three by Marlon Hart would have helped, but it didn't go in the rebound down to the Vipers and by Marcel Hawkins. But this fourth quarter, boy, it has been a lot of Vipers and not a lot of Blazers inside drawing contact. And we're going to go foul here, and I think it's going to put Daryl White at the free throw line. We'll see. It will be White. Are they stacking this up on the sideline? No shots coming. This fourth quarter has been a 15 to 6 period. Well, they are going to give shots when it's all said and done, but it's not going to be White. It's going to be Cornelius Thomas at the line. So he can improve on an 11 point cushion for his club. Well, the Blazers need an answer here like the Vipers had early in the game. Thomas empty on that shot. And the Blazers go tomorrow against the Dothan Snipers. Vipers next up, the Mississippi Hawks and the Knoxville Young Yellow Jackets. And a timeout between free throws in an 85-74 affair. Fourth quarter, one free throw on the back side of the stoppage. And if Cortez Cheney can score one point, the Georgia Vipers would have six players in double figures. The Blazers have four, and they've got Elijah Terrell sitting with eight. 85-74. Second free throw did not drop. We're five and a half remaining here in the fourth quarter. Down the lane, Hart up the basket, good. 21 from Marlon Hart has had a good game. And that brings it to a nine point spread, 85-76. Blazers trying to rally here with five minutes coming up on remaining fourth quarter. Quandell Newton defending on ball. Newton's had a good game off the bench for the Blazers. To the baseline, this is Daryl White. Wraparound pass, baseline jumper, that's off the mark, rebound. Spiked out of bounds, and they say, keep it right here, it looks like. So the Vipers maintain possession. Now Reuben Berry is back in there. He and Anthony Jackson on the floor together. That inbound tipped and stolen. That'll help the cause for the Blazers. You really can't afford to see this deficit if you're the Blazers become a whole lot worse. Three out of the corner, that would help, but it didn't go. Rebounded by Anthony Daniels in the corner. If you get down by too many, and even right now with four and three quarter minutes left, Cheney's got it. The Vipers have a nine point lead. I mean, again, you'd want to go inside the guys like Jackson and Barry on possessions to get points. You've been more productive inside. They do get a takeaway long outlet. Here's Newton on one on nobody. He'll finger roll it up and in. And Quandell Newton's got eight. But if you fall behind by too many, you'll have to rely on the three-point shot to try to get back into it. And that's not been the forte tonight for the Southwest Florida Blazers. Coming up on four minutes remaining in a 70 or an 85-78 contest and an elbow jumper that goes to make it 87-78. The other way, Miller. That shot wiped away and out of bounds. 
And it looks like they'll give it to the Blazers underneath. So 87, 78, nine point game. Right around the four minute mark, fourth quarter. Vipers trying to close this out and go to 3-0 in the young season. Second home game of the year. Newton three ball off the mark. Rebound volleyed around. Thomas ends up with it. As we are underneath four minutes remaining. Thomas pull up, elbow again. Just sticks it. Cornelius Thomas makes it 89 to 78. And that's one of the early nails in the coffin for the Southwest Florida Blazers. Hart can't triple. Newton with the rebound. And Cheney knocks the ball out of the hands of Newton after he got called for a travel. And the Vipers get the ball back. 89 to 78. Thomas wants three more. No. And a foul coming up. I would think that's on the Vipers underneath. And that's the way they're going to see it. And so Newton will inbound for the Blazers. Hope to catch you on another broadcast. 1891 coverage of the Pro Basketball Association. Better throw to be associated with this outfit. We're down to coming up on three minutes remaining. And there's a power jam underneath by Reuben Berry, who's got 17. That makes it 89 to 80. But under three minutes remaining, and you're down by nine, a three possession game. Vipers don't need to rush it. They definitely don't need to do that. Turn it over the other end. Here come two more from Barry. And the Blazers might not be done just yet. 89-82. They've cut it to seven with 2.40 to go. Cortez Cheney, take your time if you're the Vipers here. And they are not working clock. And they turn it over again on a bad pass from Cheney. Oh, and ways to close out a basketball game to get a win. This is not it for the Georgia Vipers. Not to say they won't win the game, but here's a Miller three. That would have been monstrous. Didn't go. Offensive rebound, though, no, for the Blazers. Barry, a little push off. Didn't get called for it. Turn around jumper good. Barry's got 21. And Southwest Florida's within five at 89-84. Approaching two minutes remaining fourth quarter. Vipers have not played the last minute change well at all. And with that, we'll get a stoppage. 89-84, 201 to show on the fourth quarter counter. It is a full stoppage here in Columbus. And the Blazers putting all kinds of pressure on the Georgia Vipers here in this final couple of minutes. Trying to get back in the ball game. They trailed by 11 moments ago, but they are on a 6-0 run to make it interesting, 89-84. It's Viper ball. Hang on to it. Use the clock. Cheney says, nope, I'm shooting. Rim and over the window and out of bounds. Exactly what the Blazers wanted. An empty, quick possession and the ball back. And so now one of the biggest trips in the game right here with Marlon Hart to walk it ahead. Under two minutes to go, fourth quarter. You're down by five. Hart explodes, and we get a foul call. Well, this has played out well for the Blazers. I'll say this, if nothing else, if they don't close this out in your Southwest Florida, man, they got a really competitive game out of the box to start the campaign. That is exactly what you want. You love it as a coaching staff, kind of see where your club's at. Free throw heart, can't convert, no good. But again, win or lose, I mean, you want to win the ball game, no doubt. But if you lose it, uh, this is one of those you can learn a ton about your club. The bad part is you got to turn right around and play again tomorrow. So no time to sort of work on things. Hart up, nope, missed a pair. Rebound Cheney. So the Blazers go empty on that trip. Cheney speeds ahead in the front court. Smartly circles back around out near the timeline. Five-point margin. Vipers trying to get the 3-0. It's 89-84. Entry bounce pass down on the right doorstep. Up, no, blocked, and a whistle and a foul. And it looks like Marcel Hawkins will go to the stripe. He's claiming he was hit on the arm in the shot. He knew it was a foul. You're up by five now. If you make them both, it's a three-possession game. 
If you're the Vipers, that's where you want to be as we near the final minute. Hawkins with two. 89-84. Can't connect. The best he can do is make it a six-point game. Boy, I think if you're the Blazers, even if this go, I think if you're the Blazers, I think you go down floor quickly, try to get points inside with Jackson or Barry. Second one good, 90-84. Six-point spread. You got time if you're Southwest floor. You don't need to rush for threes. And a ball poked out of bounds by the Vipers. We'll keep it right here at 90-84. Vipers a little off their pace when they went for 106 and 107 in their first two games of the year. Sitting on 90 right now. Trying to get it in. Jackson, he's got Barry on the weak side, but nice strip by Cortez Chaney to read that. He'll give the cross lane feed, and the drive is good for a lay in 92-84. And the Vipers trying to put this thing away here. Miller inside, no good, leans in on the defender, and I think we get an offensive foul called. And so the Vipers, they'll get the ball back up by eight, and they are in a great spot now. And it was all off the strip by Cortez Cheney when it was Jackson and Barry on either side of the lane, and Jackson just got his pocket picked. Under a minute remaining, eight point differential, 92-84 in the timeout. And Cheney started a two on one the other way. That was a heck of a read. And we told you, even though Cortez Cheney is not having the kind of scoring night he had in games one and two, uh, he's that Swiss Army knife kind of guy. And that was one of the biggest steals in the game right there. He had nine in the previous two games coming in combined. This is a stat stuffer kind of kid. And Cortez Cheney, Ripped it out of the hands of Anthony Jackson. Turned it the other way for two in a game that could have been cut to four. Now sits instead at eight. Big swing in the final minute. This Georgia team looks like they're going to get to three and zero oh here. Next matchup against the Mississippi Hawks. Well, they got by on the skin of their teeth against the Montgomery Knights. Southwest Florida plays that night squad coming up in July. Up floor, Cheney's got it. Out of the right wing. Hart all over him. Cheney coming across the lane. Feeds inside. It's a little ill-advised, but they do keep possession. Now back on perimeter. Drain that clock. Cornelius Thomas steps up. Let it go from three. Oh, just dagger three for Cornelius Thomas. 95-84. Well, that pretty much ends the proceedings. Here's Barry with a short jumper. No, with the follow, can't finish that either. <laughs> and then wraps up the Viper rebounder at 95 to 84 with 20 showing on the clock in the fourth quarter. And an 11-point game. And you go back to that Cortez, Cortez Cheney steal of Anthony Jackson on the left side of the lane when he was trying to back a defender down. Cheney came from off the ball to steal it. And that was really the last time the Blazers had a chance to get back in it. Here's Hawkins at the line. This is just icing on the cake now if you're Georgia. Free throw. Yes, finds a way in. Did not think that was going to go. 13 for Marcel Hawkins. That makes it 96-84. Hawkins with one more in the final 20. Blazers going to fall to a season opening loss here to a Viper team. That'll be 3 0. Second one good. Another one for Hawkins. That makes it 97 84. Hart over the line from 15 on the clock. Unloads. Missed it. Tip. Jackson no. Rebound. Vipers have it. Blazers are content to let the clock wind down. Trailing by 13 with five to go, and that will wrap it up as the Georgia Vipers, who trailed now, it was early, by double figures, come back to beat the Southwest Florida Blazers by a score of 97 to 84.
We'll wrap it up right after this from Columbus. This is Triangle Media coverage by 1891 of the Pro Basketball Association. Back to wrap it up from Columbus, Georgia, as the Georgia Vipers go to 3-0, and a great second half as they beat the Southwest Florida Blazers. This was an entertaining matchup, to say the least, and the Vipers did it by going for 50 second-half points as they outscore the Blazers 50-37 to in the second half. Greg Allen back with you here from Columbus. It was an early 18-8 lead for the Southwest Florida Blazers. The Vipers would stiffen after that. It was 24-19 at the end of one. 47 all at the half. Vipers outscored the Blazers 28-23 in the second quarter. They outscored 23-21 in the third to take a 70-68 lead in the fourth quarter. It was Cornelius Thomas that had a three to close the third quarter at the buzzer. Part of his 30-point performance tonight for the Vipers to give Georgia a 70-68 lead going to the fourth, and they outscore the Blazers 27-16 in the final stanza to win it by a score of 97-84. to Your leading scores, first for Georgia, they get 30 from Thomas, mentioned that earlier. They, after that, get 14 apiece from both Bill Reese, who had a great second quarter, and Marcel Hawkins. They get 12 apiece from Daryl White and Anthony Daniels. For the Southwest Florida Blazers, led in scoring by Ruben Berry, who had 21 points, 14 from fellow big man Anthony Jackson. It was 21 also from Marlon Hart, who had a good game at the point guard position. That can be a little trio there for the Southwest Florida Blazers that we'll keep an eye on as the season goes along. You get the the point guard handles of Marlon Hart and the two big guys inside and Barry and Jackson. You can do some good things. Swandrick Miller had 12, and they get eight each from Elijah Terrell and Quandell Newton. Newton's eight come off the bench as the Vipers win it by a score of 97 to 84. Vipers improved to 3-0. They're one of their next matchups against the Mississippi Hawks coming up in June, while the Blazers right back at it tomorrow night against the Dothan Snipers in another Southeast Divisional matchup. We say so long from Columbus, Georgia. Triangle Media by 1891 presenting coverage of the Pro Basketball Association. I'm Greg Allen. Again, your final score is the Vipers go to 3-0. Blazers drop their season opener. Your final night from Columbus. 97 to 84. Have a good night, everybody.